Ben Weiss here, and today we'll talk about our run energy systems comparison. So we're gonna be looking at your 400 meter run time trial versus your 1600 meter run time trial, which is 1600 meters is just a few meters shy of a mile. So we'll count it as your mile time trial. So ideally this would be formed at a track or somewhere flat um, where it could be like a loop, right? And it's exact, because it matters. So first you're gonna perform your 400 meter time trial, getting the best score that you possibly can on it, um, whatever that means for you, and then we are going to rest fully, which I would say like at least 12 minutes of rest is probably safe, probably a little bit more walking, flushing, whatever you need to do, be able to kind of feel good, like 100% completely rested and ready to go for your mile time trial. So again, that will be 1600 meters is four laps around the track versus one lap for the 400 meters. So the reason why we're doing this is to look at what is your pace degradation so basically how much are you slowing down in terms of average pace from a 400 meters to your average split 400 meters on the the 1600 meter run so an enduring athlete if we're looking at the results here is going to be less than 1.3 from 400 meter to 1600 meter uh degradation a blended athlete would be 1.3 to 1.4 and then a powerful athlete would be above 1.4 so I've heard other coaches in this space kind of mention other, you know, things to aim for, like, you know, 1.25. Um, I found this to be appropriate for a lot of the CrossFit athletes I work with. And I think it's appropriate based on CrossFit athletes, not necessarily based on, um, you know, runners because CrossFit athletes run along with other things is not in isolation. So those would be the ranges that I think are appropriate for now. I have reserved the right to, to move those around and shift them um, as I get more data. But for now, I think that's pretty accurate. Yeah, best of luck on your row energy systems comparison test.